This Hobbit's probably about £30,000. So this is just rare in itself, even though it's only a little bit. Love the cover. I bought that for the cover. They just sound bulgar. I <laughs> just love Bilbo on his horse. He didn't really look like that in, <laughs> no, the, uh, in no. the book at all. And there's, there's Bilbo. And Tolkien hated this translation. The Hobbit. I'll show you something that is probably one of the highlights of my collection. Mm -hmm. We're keeping it, we were keeping these secret until recently we had these, but certain people have actually already t said they've got them, so I'm, I'm fairly happy now to announce, to announce these. Olá, Tolkien Talkers! Eu sou a Gilson Sim, correspondente do TT aqui no Reino Unido, e vocês devem se lembrar que eu bati um papo com um dos maiores colecionadores de Tolkien do mundo, o Andrew Ferguson, mais conhecido como Trotter na comunidade. E se você ainda não assistiu, corre lá para ver, eu vou deixar o link na descrição desse vídeo, porque hoje eu vou mostrar os livros mais preciosos da coleção dele. Sério, tem muita coisa que eu nunca tinha visto antes. Mas antes disso, bora para os recadinhos. Você já está inscrito no canal do Tolkien Talk? Já segue a gente nas redes sociais? Dê um like nesse vídeo para apoiar o nosso trabalho? Se não fez isso, bora fazer! E se inscreva também no canal Tolkien Guide, que é referência mundial em Tolkien, e que o Trotter é um dos responsáveis. E eu também vou fazer o meu jabazinho, né? Como eu moro em Londres e eu sou apaixonada pelo Reino Unido, eu decidi criar um projeto de roteiros personalizados e ensaios fotográficos pelo Reino Unido. Então, se você, algum amigo ou familiar, planeja vir para cá, me siga nas redes sociais, é arroba Sim, e bora conversar, porque aí sua viagem pode ser ainda mais especial, inclusive com visitas a lugares que o professor Tolkien esteve. Bom, recado dado, agora bora explorar as estantes do Trotter. And what, what's, what I've actually got is all the different UK editions of The Hobbit since it first came out. And it first came out in 1937. That's the first Hobbit that I ever bought. That's the first one? That's the first one. Can yes. I see it? You can, yes. O primeiro que ele comprou. The very first Hobbit that ever came out was this one. Now this is a facsimile cover because I don't have it with an original cover, but I do have a bit of the original cover. And on the back, you can see that. This is this is from the original cover. And one thing that's quite famous about the first printing is that they compared talking to Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. But Lewis Carroll's um, real name was Charles Dodgson. And when they put his name in, as you can see there, <laughs> They spelt it wrong. <laughs> oh. So someone had to go and cross out by hand 1,500 copies of this. They must have been fed up with this dust Amazing. jacket. And they actually crossed out the uh, the E in Dodgson. In the later printing, um, they, they corrected the, uh, the spelling. But this is very famous. And the fact that the only bit of the dust jacket I actually have is this bit is really nice because that's the bit where they've hand corrected it. And you have it because uh, how many people do you think have uh, this edition? Well, there's. With this part, with this bit. Well, there's 1500 copies of this were made. Um, and I think there's probably three or four hundred still in existence. Mm. So to actually have any part of the dust jacket at all from the original Hobbit is hugely uh, rare. So this is just rare in itself, even though it's only a little yeah. bit. What happens in a, a few years ago was that um, HarperCollins decided to make a facsimile edition yeah. of this. And the facsimile edition is this. Yeah. There it is. It's exactly the same. They do a very good job on the fact some of Even to put in the stain on the top, 
so it was green originally and this one can you see it was green ah uh, but it's to, faded it's time, yes it's faded yeah. over time this hobbit's probably about thirty thousand pounds <laughs> when i one of the things that i wanted to do with the hobbit was to get all the different printings of the hobbit and what i mean you by do that, have like lots of it yeah so what i mean by that is that when when you when a book comes out most books only ever get one printing because mm -hmm. no, one's, no one buys them again but this one when it came out in 1937 it sold out straight away because it's only 1500 copies and they produced a second printing which came out three months later this one came out in september and this one came out in december mm. this is the second print of the hobbit from 1937. i actually got an include in both of the uh, the flats this time so you can see you can see the silver bits missing on this yeah. one and this one the way you can tell the difference obviously is it now it's a second impression mm. and it's also in colour this was the first one that was in colour and this is and there's some great colour illustrations in here and what they did so what Tolkien did when these were put in was he wanted to tell them where to put them in the book so let's see if I can find one of the illustrations this one the, this one has in the, the printing in Oxford lots of products yes lots of products one, yeah. so you can see that Tolkien called this one Bilbo comes to the huts of the raft elves but when he sent them the illustrations he wrote there underneath which op, which page it should be printed opposite so it should be very printed, detail oriented yes right? and it should be printed opposite the page that says the dark river opened suddenly wide mm. and if you look on here it should it will say that on here somewhere it will say the dark river opened suddenly wide um but that's not the name of the picture so they they should they weren't meant to put the, the name of the uh, picture is bill comes so they put the wrong name underneath. And, and he must have been like... And he was very oh, cross. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine he was a very cross professor yeah. when he found out that, they, that they'd done that. And um, this is... Um, the other nice thing about this book is the binding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of Yeah, and it's, you can't you can't recreate the paper. So yeah. the, the fact similarly one, it's, it's nice. Yeah, the paper is different. It's modern paper. You yeah. can't really go back to 1937 paper. Yeah. It, uh, it, it it feels like uh, I don't know lighter, but also softer. I don't know yeah, how, it's, to, it's, how to explain um, it. But it, unfortunately, it's not acid-free paper either. So it does go. This is why it's gone brown. This acid in the paper. Mm. Um, so there's not much you can do about that, but. Yeah. Uh, this this one's only worth about fifteen thousand pounds, mm. unlike that one, because it's a late because it's a later one. Mm. And then we get the later printing. So this is the third printing of the Hobbit. This one is from the war. And the, but this one has a proper dust jacket. This this has, this has the whole dust jacket. And the green, you can see the green part. And the here. green's still there. Yes, the yeah. green's still on there. And this one was done on war economy paper because it's during mm. the war. So the paper, can you tell the paper's different? different? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, the paper's it, quite it, different. It's quite more similar to what we have now. Yes. So basically, these go all the way up to 1975. So that's the first printing up to the 24th printing. Mm -hmm. This is the American first printing. So this, this one came out in 1938. Mm. I've never seen this one before. And um, it's quite, it's a oh, bit different. it's in red. It's in red, yes. Yeah. And they, um, this is a library copy. So it's still got, still got the original library <laughs> nice. marks in it. So a lot of these are library. And again, but Tolkien didn't like this. He, he didn't like this edition. No, he hated the change in the, well, he spent a long time doing this lovely cover. And the Americans thought that it was too British. <laughs> so they didn't of like, course. so they, they put this in instead. <laughs> mm. And um, they still use some of his pictures. Obviously, that's his picture, and, mm. that, and that, that is his picture. Nice. And the, the, the one in, yeah, the, the red part. Yeah, you can the, see the, the back. back the yeah. back is, is red as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> this picture, yeah. well, uh, this is only in the American edition to begin with. Mm. 
which is Bilbo woke up with the early sun in his eyes. So that, this isn't in the in the in the British one for a long time, mm -hmm. and they didn't like the Bilbo comes to the hut to the rod elves. So that's not in here. Mm -hmm. They thought that was too British as well. Um, <laughs> too British. What I really find strange is this. Mm. Now you probably recognise that picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But can you see anything wrong with it? See what's different now? Here, here. They took it off. They painted over it. Why? Too British. Aqui é diferente. A edição americana não tem isso daqui. E a edição britânica tem essa. Because it's too British. <laughs> it's strange, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They made the picture bigger as well, so the pictures yeah. were, so they enlarged it. They didn't paint over the original, obviously, because we still yeah. got that. But I, uh, they did that on the other pictures as well. They just got rid of Tolkien's writing. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the bowing hobbit and the <laughs> hobbit's got shoes and again Tolkien said that that it was a mistake in the book Bilbo was meant to have shoes but he forgot he was meant to, he, he then wrote in a letter that when he went to Rivendell Elrond gave him some boots to wear but he then forgot when he, when he, when he was obviously doing this picture he he thought that that was still going to be in the book. Tolkien very often forgot his own forgot writing, his own, his own and writing. then he got back and, and sometimes he would explain it, like, oh no, it's because of that, and then try to explain in the lore, you know, but then, but then again he would only admit it, you know. This one is one of the rarer of its. I had never seen it before. These are very, very rare. If anybody ever thought that, we think there's probably only about 50 copies of these. 50? 50, 50 in existence. And we know about 35, I think, at the moment. These are very, very rare. Who is the hobbits. illustrator? We don't know. Someone at one point said it was Tolkien, but of course that, that's not Tolkien. And they, these came out in the 1960, uh, 1960s. And these were for primary schools. So they were for very young children. Um, and there are no illustrations inside. No illustrations, nothing. No. This illustrator is an illustrator called Michael Haig, who a lot of people don't really know about so much these days. That's but he was fun. a very popular illustrator and he smells great. The whole thing is very nicely illustrated. This is a very it's a very good book. And this this one is the one that I recommend for anyone who wants to read to their children. Oh. Because the illustrations are fantastic inside it. And there's lots of different illustrations. This this is the one really for reading to children. It is called Hobbity. This is in Finnish. This is by an artist called Tove Jansson. I, I told this story in Talking Talk yeah. about the Gollum picture. And the Gollum yeah. picture's in here. And yes. I, quite, I quite like her, her art, but oh. different. Yes, <laughs> this one. <laughs> I find now, it amusing. I, I, I can imagine Tolkien's you know, reaction to it. Uh, now, he didn't really complain about this one mm. too much. What he did complain about was the first printing of The Hobbit that wasn't in English. Mm. And that was the Swedish edition of The Hobbit. That's a Bulgarian one. That one's wonderful. <laughs> I just love the cover. I bought that for the cover. Gollum. Look at Gollum on the back. <laughs> His boat. Ah. <laughs> Gollum. <laughs> but I just love Bilbo on his horse. No, it's really... Because he didn't really look like that in, <laughs> no, the, uh, in no. the book at all. Definitely not. But that's the Bulgarian edition. Can you read Bulgarian? No. I just like the illustration. <laughs> I, I, this one I wanted for the cover. Yeah. Um, but this is the first um, translation of The Hobbit called Hompen. Hmm. And there's, there's Bilbo. And Tolkien hated this translation. He went absolutely mad. And what he didn't like was Gollum. So that's Gollum. Oh. Oh, that... It's, so it I looks think like Tony a Anson's one is actually quite <laughs> not, is, is, is better than this. He complained and said, well, Gollum doesn't look anything like that. And then he thought, well, I'll go and have a look in the book and see what I've written about Gollum. Yeah. Or how I've described him. Mm -hmm. And he hadn't described him at all. So in the book, there is nothing about Gollum. Oh. So Gollum could look like this. Yeah. 
So he went back and re-changed the book mm. to the 1966 version, which has been one of these, says that Gollum was a small, slimy creature. Mm. And he put that in to the book for the illustrator because he didn't like them looking like this. So it's not it's neither of these two's fault yeah. that, uh, that Gollum looks like that. And oh. another really nice edition is this one. I just love it. This is the Dutch edition. <laughs> I just think it's great. <laughs> that, that is, so that's Milbo and then there's the dwarves. <laughs> I loved it. It's a fantastic edition. Are there any illustrations? No. no. Just yeah. that. But the cover in itself. The Hobbit. It's just a lovely cover. How do you pronounce it? Uh, De Hobbit. De Hobbit. De Hobbit. So that's a Dutch edition. <laughs> and uh, that, that will probably do for Hobbits because I think in the evil day, if we <laughs> yeah. some of the other ones. <laughs> Then we get on to The Lord of the Rings, uh, which is what these, most of these books are The Lord of the Rings, and then down here is The History of Middle Earth, and these are Folio Society. But some of these books, like the, this one here, uh, these are the first printings of The Lord of the Rings. The first printings? The first printings, yeah, the UK ones. That one's from 1954, which is Fellowship of the Ring. They have lovely Amazing. maps in the back, they have, they have big fold out maps. This is a later box set, it's turned around the other way, but these ones are actually quite nice additions because these are what the covers originally looked like. And you see those, those ones have faded a bit in the brown, but these ones have been out of the light. So these are the original colours. And these, these are from the 1960s. But these are first editions as well. Um, and it's really nice, I like the fact that you have things like red, yeah. these sort of red ink yeah. on the top. This set is the first deluxe edition of The Lord of the Rings. This is from 1963. It was in the box set. And what they did to make it deluxe was they just changed the colour to black and then charged three times as much as the ordinary. <laughs> so they, they, this was the early one. And um, this was three times as much. But they these the are black and they're not the inside, they're the same. But they, they did also put um, ribbon markers inside. Oh no, it's beautiful. It's like it's still yeah, ribbon markers. Yeah, it's different. And this box is, is lovely. This is a design by Pauline Baines. Mm. It's called a, a triptych. And it's basically three panels. And if you look at it, this one, that is the uh, that's the Shire going off towards the Misty Mountains. And then you have the next bit of the story. Nice. And then you've got, um, go all the way to Mount yeah. Doom. Uh, and she she drew this, uh, Tolkien liked this picture and he bought it off of her and he, he originally put it in his wall. So okay. he was very impressed. Uh, so this comes in a box? No, yeah, and then I made another box. Ah, you it. made it. So you can see this box, oh, you can okay. actually see a bit more easily. What, so that's <laughs> yeah. what the, the box looks like. And you printed yourself this No, I, I got this from a, a dealer in America who oh, makes my... Nice. But this is, it's too fragile to actually yeah. have even in its own box. So in 1968, uh, the first paperback edition of Lord of the Rings was, is this, this one. <laughs> Which is, if you can notice, that's, this is the same illustration as I just showed you on the uh, yeah. on the cover. The, oh. But they didn't. She didn't. It's only the front and the back on this one. You didn't. They, they, um, they missed the side bit, so it's a bit of a shame, really, because it is meant to be three illustrations, so that the middle bit's missing. But um, this one was, if you were in the UK and you were a book dealer and you pre-ordered a hundred copies of this book. Um, you would get one with talking signature inside it. Awesome. <laughs> From 1931, and this is a uh, a menu for an Oxford College that Tolkien, that uh, for Pembroke College, which Tolkien was the professor um. at Pembroke College in 1931. And he was also oh. when he went home in the evenings, he was writing. Um, a book called the Hobbit. So I, I always think that he, he went to this and then he went home and wrote about the Hobbit when he got home. 
But if you look there, yeah. can you see someone's yeah, signature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do our Tolkien signature. And in, so this is what he had to eat. And you can see that they, uh, they gave toasts. Toast. Which is where you say to the king. And it, one, one of the toasts was to the college. Okay. And that was given by Professor Tolkien. So he actually did toast. And here, this is what they had. So they had grapefruit cocktail. And if you look at the bit, the brown stuff yeah. there, that that's part. That's some of the gravy I think from the meal. <laughs> it's still there. That's all that is. Yeah, this is this is some of the food from the meal. Wh when did you get it? This I, yeah. I, I got this in. Um, it's about ten years ago. And uh, if you look at the top of the, uh, you see there it says. E. W. Morgan. He was the person who he, he was actually an American. So he was from California, and he was at uh, Pembroke College. And he went and asked everyone who was at this menu at this menu, to sign. Mm. Now English people don't do this, so fortunately there was an American, <laughs> and he went and he got every. So inside is uh, the names of everyone who was there. These ones are called Super Deluxe Editions, mm. and they're called Super because it's all leather. So these are the whole thing is leather. Can, can I open you it? You can, yes. Mine's well, not a side one, unfortunately, but this is copy number one hundred twenty-four. Yeah, there was meant to be out of a thousand, but they actually only really did about one hundred and fifty. Probably the nicest. Uh, Super Deluxe, and it's the Children of Hurin. This is probably the nicest of, of all of the... Uh, see, it has a little thing to lift it out. I think this might be my favourite it's, it, it's today. It's a fantastic The most book. beautiful. It's the most beautiful, I'd say it is, mm. yes. Look at this. 37? Yes, yeah, so oh. 500. And it's signed by Christopher Tolkien Allen Lee. Capture that. And it smells good. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's, this one's nice as well. This is also, it's a similar design to the, the one you just looked at. I just love this design, it's so... Well, it, it feels a bit different, that one. It's a different type of leather. Yeah. Like and I'll show you something that is probably one of the highlights of my collection, mm -hmm. which is this. Um, we were keeping we were keeping these secret until recently. We had these, but certain people have actually already t said they've got them, so I'm, I'm fairly happy now to announce to announce these. Collins here. And, um, Three illustrators who, who did it, who illustrated it. So it was Alan Lee. You might have heard the illustrator. So Alan Lee, John yeah, Howe, and Ted Nason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have a look inside, there's a map. Keep going. Okay. I'm so no, afraid. No, don't go too far. Yeah. You need to start at the beginning. <laughs> One. Ten. Ten copies for. It's all people. That is good. And you can see who signed it. Yeah. John Howe, Howell, Ted Nays, and Alan Lee. Lee. But keep going. Next page. Wait to get to some blank pages. Look at this. That's Ted Nays. Am, am I allowed to be touching this yes, page? You are. I mean, <laughs> come on. That's, that's Ted Nays. <laughs> keep going. Oh my God! How did you manage to do that? We, we are. We, we, it, it was a, a massive undertaking. That's John Howe. How how long did it take for um, you to make all of them? To it was about eight months of it going months. all around the world. It's been around the world about ten times. This book. How and many countries? 
did it attend? Well, um, Alan Lee's in the UK, uh, Ted Nay Smith is in Canada, and John mm -hmm. Howe's in Switzerland. Um, Congratulations on that. And this one, oh, this, this is your first, yeah. the first print in the summer in the UK one. And this one is signed by Crystal oh, Tolkien. Okay. How uh, much is, the, is this one? Uh, this is over a thousand pounds, probably about nearly two thousand pounds. Christopher's signature has gone up in price yeah. quite a lot because uh, he did sign quite a lot compared with his father, but he's still not a mass. He wasn't. He didn't really do book signings. And this one was. Uh, this is. This is also signed by Christopher and Ted Naismith. But it, it's. It's just got some lovely illustrations in it. E é isso, Talking Talkers. Espero que vocês tenham gostado desse vídeo. E eu quero saber uma coisa. Comenta aqui. Se você pudesse escolher uma edição da coleção do Trotter, qual seria? E para conhecer mais sobre o trabalho do Andrew, acessem o Talking Guide, talkingguide.com. E se depois desse vídeo vocês ainda não se inscreveram aqui no canal do TT e também no meu, Jusson Sim, aí eu nem tenho o que te falar. Vai pesar na tua consciência. Brincadeira. Me siga lá no arroba Gilson Sim, lá eu compartilho o meu dia a dia morando em Londres, curiosidades históricas e muita cultura pelas minhas viagens. E também tem meu projeto de roteiros personalizados por aqui. E é isso! Beijinho, até mais! <música>